<laughs> Two things. Um, uh, uh, thing one is I heard several people talk tonight about brokenness. Raise your hand if you heard some people talk about brokenness, <laughs> which I identify with um, as a fellow person who feels like they're made from brokenness. And I want to remind you about something, which is this, that that implies pieces, right? And what I was thinking about watching that video that you started with, it's beautiful, of all those different women, oh, now I can see you. <laughs> of all those different women, like pieces of women uh, that we're familiar with, and we're, I almost started crying when I was watching that video to be reminded of all those women. Um, and the USA gymnasts, and all their pieces of story, um, and the Me Too, movement and pieces of story and so what I what I want to say about brokenness and the way in which we're pieces of each other is that you put enough fucking pieces together you can bring the whole shit house down so that Um, so, I want to tell you a story. First of all, thank you for including me. I'm so moved by all the stories. I have friends here who have told stories here before, and then the people tonight just, <laughs> voice wobble, broke my heart and kind of gave it back to me. So thank you, everybody who read tonight, talked tonight, told a story. Um, I'm going to tell a story that's sort of based on a big thing I did. But what I want to tell the story about is what's underneath that. So um, this isn't that important. But two years ago, I gave a TED Talk. Raise your hand if you've heard of a TED Talk. <laughs> I know, they're so fucked up. <laughs> I don't even believe in TED Talks. Can I just don't tell anyone? <laughs> I mean, I do and I don't. I don't because little bits of information masquerading as important, profound knowledge and kind of commercialized hype sound bites and all that, and I'm cynical about that. And then, and then you get there, and what you find out is the beauty of TED Talks is that they're pieces of story. And it reminds you that no one story can ever be bigger than some other story if there are hundreds of them. And that's kind of a nice phenomenon about TED Talks. So two years ago, I gave <laughs> this TED Talk that changed my life, frankly. Um, I am not the kind of person who had any business doing a TED Talk. <laughs> I'm a hardcore introvert, like need medication to leave the house. Um, I did not ask to do a TED Talk. <laughs> I did not want to do a TED Talk. I got invited on a night I was reading the email inviting me, and I was schnockered. And so in that state, it was like, fuck yeah, I can do a TED <laughs> Do a TED Talk. This is awesome. Andy, I'm thinking of doing a TED Talk. It's going to be awesome. And then, of course, I wake up the next morning, and I'm like, oh! <laughs> oh, you got the full-blown snoring on that one. Um, and so if you, has anyone here ever done one? So you don't know. So, <laughs> so you have like seven months before the actual thing. And in those seven months, the TED folk, um, Anybody remember the old Star Trek television show? Yeah. I, I, judging from the age of some of you, like me, yeah, right, I know, it's awesome. Um, politically radical show, by the way. <laughs> uh, the, the episode that had the big, huge-headed aliens and they were just their heads, that's what the TED folk were like, <laughs> because for seven months you have to practice with your computer screen and these like five TED folk heads watch you and give you um, advice on how you're doing. 
Like in your home, and I'm still, I'm in my underwear doing it because I'm in my home, I'm safe, I'm not outside in the world, but they come on your screen in a conference call type thing and you practice and they give you feedback. Can you imagine a more horrifying thing? It's horrible, it's completely horrible. And so I would keep saying I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'd run outside the room and like, you know, masturbate or do whatever <laughs> to like <laughs> get it back together so I could like do the thing in front of the TED folk. And they're like. <laughs> it's just awful. But that's not the story I wanted to tell you. Um, and you can look my ass up if you want to and find this TED Talk. And the TED Talk is about very sad things in my life and a very hard moment in my life where something beautiful was offered to me and I didn't know how to accept it. Uh, because like so many of you in the room, I came from abuse and transgression and loss and grief and brokenness. And so that's what the TED Talk is about. But I want to tell you about what was underneath the TED Talk. Um, so we go to Vancouver, Canada, <laughs> which is where the TED Talks happen. And we have this huge, beautiful hotel room. And that's it. I'm like, this is good. We got this awesome hotel room. There's a mini bar. We're good. I, the whole thing's worth it. <laughs> um, but my talk was scheduled on the fifth day we were there. Which means if you're me, and you're not only a hardcore introvert, but you also barf when you're nervous, and shit your pants when you're nervous, it's like five days of barfing and shitting nonstop in your beautiful hotel room. Like it seemed cool when we got there, but then realizing how long I had to wait was just like god awful. So just picture me like barfing and shitting my way through five days in a really nice hotel room. <laughs> so that's the first understory. Um, the second understory is that the TED folk, remember the big heads on the screen, they give you instructions like, please wear um, neutral colored clothing. So I pack my suitcase with like shit brown dress. <laughs> Um, mucus green dress, um, poopy dirt dress, because <laughs> I'm the neutral color. I'm like, I got this. It's Oregon. The color of a slug. I got this. So the day before, I'm trying the dresses on in front of Andy, like, which one of my slug dresses? <laughs> so I come out of the bathroom, he's like, Jesus, God. <laughs> You can't wear that one. I'm like, okay, okay, I got another one. I come out again. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> but what I also packed in my bag was like every little girl before she grows into a woman and realizes culture is fucked, dream princess dress. I don't know why I put the dress in the suitcase. I had my instructions. Bring the mucus shit slug color dresses. <laughs> And I was ready for that, because remember, I'm like you. I'm not unlike you. So Andy, this guy I keep talking about is my husband, Andy. He's over there. I like to bring him here so I can tell a piece of this story with him present every time. <laughs> Andy says, go put the other dress on. I'm like, no, they said I had to wear a new dress. He's like, just go put it on. So I put it on. I come out. And he goes, wear that. Like, but the TED people said you had to wear this. <laughs> um, he goes, this is what cinched it. He goes, it's the colors of the TED stage. And if you ever watch a TED talk, they're red and blue. And that's what did it, because he was right. So he tricked me. <laughs> he handed me one of those little mini bar bottles of vodka. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I brought it. is the astonishingly cool anthropology because they make pretty clothes that even ample people can wear, TED Talk dress. Whoa. 
you see me, this is me. This is how I dress every day of my life, and usually I wear this same thing like seven days in a row. <laughs> with like maybe, I have like seven different ones of these black shirts. <laughs> Just change the shirt. Um, this is the dress. Not slug color. So, <laughs> I'm going in to do my TED talk in the beautiful, beautiful Disney princess <laughs> dress that I don't deserve, that I feel broken inside of, but still, damn, <laughs> it's gorgeous. And I'm wearing my dress and we go in. And so there's a whole TED prep area before you do the talk. And Oh, God, in the TED prep area, you are reminded they have to mic you up, right? Do you see a belt on this dress? Do you see any pockets? Do you see anything they could hook the big fat mic pack to? Me either. <laughs> so you know what they do if there's nowhere to hook this giant mic pack on you? Do you know? They put it under your clothing with a belly band so that, you know, you can be mic'd up and you're able to project your sound. So far, so good, okay? So the first thing is, this they have to get a woman to come do it because they're going to go under my dress, right? So they go find this pixie dream girl who's like beautiful and 12 and about this big. <laughs> She's like, I got this, I got this. This amazing little creature comes, goes up under my dress <laughs> to put the belly band on with the mic pack. And here's the best part. I am bleeding like a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm 52 at that time. I'm having the Red Sea period. I am having the worst period I've ever had in my fucking life. Pixie Dream Girl is up under there. I'm like, she smells pennies. She's just down there smelling pennies. It's horrible. I'm like, I don't believe in God, but I'm standing there praying, please God, don't let me drown this Pixie Dream Girl with blood from my snatch all over her head. Do not let me drown this poor woman. You know, and I'm kind of standing so she can put the belt on. You know, I'm like, <laughs> horribly embarrassing. Just got up and she finally reemerges. She's like, okay, I got it. And she leaves like this. <laughs> so clearly I could have just died of humiliation right there. And I almost did. I mean, embarrassment can kill a person. <laughs> and I, and I, I feel like I almost died right there. Um, but it gets better <laughs> in my beautiful dress. Because um, so each TED session has about six people in it. And so kind of like this, you know, you go on after the speaker in front of you. The speaker in front of me was John Legend. Just sit with that for a second. <laughs> John Legend, the singer, you know how many Grammys he has? Like eight. And he sings. They wheel out a grand piano and he sings. And one of the songs he sings is Revolution Song. And the whole place is like, it's the John Legend Church. I mean, I'm sitting there like, I, I, I do believe in God. I believe in, if it's John Legend, he's God, I believe in him. It was so beautiful. Everyone's crying. It's amazing. And that's the person I have to go on after with my blood flood. <laughs> <laughs> and I know some of you in the room have heard this before, but I'm going to say it again, and this is why I bring him to every reading. I... Get ready to go up, because it's my term, and they're announcing my voice, and I'm thinking, I can't feel my legs. I'm not sure I can even walk up the step things. I can't feel my arms, I can't feel my legs, I'm bleeding to death. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, my breathing's a little bit weird, like I might pass out. And I turn to look at Andy, 
because my soulmate, my life, my rock, almost 20 years together, I'm like, I need support from my soulmate. I turn to look at him in the face, and the look on his face is like, you are so fucked. <laughs> I mean, he was like blanched. <laughs> like, don't look at me. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get up and I do the TED talk. And here's the thing that's true. My son, who's 16 now, Miles, has watched the video of me doing the TED Talk, and it's a very true statement. He said, I can see where your fear crests. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. Like, you can see it. You can see where, like, my uh, <laughs> shaking and bleeding kind of calms down for a second. And then he said, and I knew you were going to be okay. But he's right. You can see it. You can see where my, talk about stage fright. You can see where my fear crests. And I kind of almost turn into a normal person, but not quite because I'm still me. So it's never going to happen. <laughs> but I give the TED Talk and I don't die. And, you know, that's amazing. <laughs> and a couple things left to tell you. One is... Um, I haven't worn this dress since. And I've thought about that. Um, it's what you do to like a wedding dress. Or maybe a funeral dress. Both of which I have. It's like the dress symbolizes hope or courage or something I don't feel in regular life. And so it's a little bit sacred to me, secularly. That's a thing, just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not going to get rid of it, and I'm never going to wear it again. Because on that day, with all that blood and all that fear, um, something was true that's not true in my regular life. And the thing that was true, that's not true in my regular life, is that um, I'm like you. And I wanted it to be true that those of us who feel broken or like we're in pieces could stand in the light too. So I'm here tonight even though it's terrifying, still. I'm not bleeding, don't worry. <laughs> I'm here for the women who spoke ahead of me because I'm like you and not different than you. And when you write, it helps me be stronger because we're all pieces of each other. So um, I did the TED Talk, and I'm here tonight only for you. So thank you.